If you're seeing the shadow of a bat, be sure to look up. Here's your look at the brand new Spin Master Toys The Flash Movie, Ultimate Batwing with Flash and Batman. Take the Flash adventures to new height with the Flash Ultimate Batwing set. Featuring 4-inch The Flash and Michael Keaton Batman and the Batwing vehicle, the Flash movie action figures are highly detailed with 11 points of articulation for dynamic battle stances. Open up the cockpit and place the Flash or Batman into the epic Batwing vehicle. Pull up the landing gear and get to defend the world against chaos. With a detailed sculpt and awesome movie styling, your figures will come to life. Kids will love to engage their imagination and create their own superhero versus supervillain scenes. The fate of the world is in your hands. Just before we get anybody piloting this pretty cool looking Batwing, let me first thank the folks over at Spin Master that did provide this sample of the brand new Flash movie Batwing that we could have a look at in this review. In a second, I'll bring in the 89 Batmobile, one that we've already had a look at in an earlier review, and I'll scale them out. This Batwing also comes packaged with the same Flash and the same Batman that we had looked at before. So they're sort of double dipping, or in the case of Batman, if we already can consider the 89 Batmobile, a triple dip of the Cape Crusader. But let's grab the tape measure either way, though, and I'm going to measure the wingspan of the Batwing. So from one end to the other, you're getting the wingspan of the Batwing being about 13 inches let's go with 13 for that and that works out to be about i would say 35 centimeters wide as for the figures themselves even though it's territory we've already covered both batman and the flash stand exactly four inches in height or the figure is going to be in this case about nine and a half or about 10 centimeters tall and just moving barry and bruce out of the way so we can then bring in the 89 batmobile not really having anything to compare them wise, at least in the trailer we've seen so far. I guess this would be an accurate sizing. If anything, I would maybe say that the Batwing would be a little bit bigger from what least footage we've seen of, of it in the movie. But I think for the purpose of displaying these and scaling them with a four inch line, I think the Batwing and the Batmobile look pretty good together. Okay, so let's bring back in the figures and getting a closer look at them. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time because we've already covered, covered the territory of looking at both Flash and Batman individually. Not to mention, again, we also looked at Batman again when we looked at him with the 89 Batmobile. So in this case, yes, while it being a double dip here of Barry Allen, let's just reach to the side and bring in the one we looked at before. Straighten out his legs here. Yeah, you can see that they are going to be exactly the same figures to one another. And I can't really fault Spin Master necessarily for wanting to re-release the same figures again. Giving you then a chance, if you didn't get the chance to find save these figures singularly, you can at least, at least then get the ones that come included with the vehicle. But that can also work against them, I feel, also as well. If you're one like me, for example, that would be first looking for the vehicles and then realizing that, say, the figures are already coming included with the vehicles, there really isn't a lot of incentive, unfortunately, then to want to get the figures separately. Because as you can see, that they are clearly the same to one another. Paint for what they still are are good-looking figures. You've got, again, the panel lining here represented on the front of Barry's chest. You don't get, again, much of it in the way on the back of the figure's body, but he has at least the gold color there for both the belt, the arms, and even down below here on the boots. Still like the idea that we actually get ourselves fully gold boots as opposed to sort of those panel pieces we get in the actual movie suits. Still, you get the peg holes on the undersides of the feet, so there's nothing really new with that. And again, like the articulation for Flash and the Batman we're about to have a look at is exactly the same as before. Head is going to be on a ball joint. You got hinges again for the shoulders that allow those arms to come out. You can rotate the arms, yeah, all the way around. Single hinge again for the elbow that allows at least the forearm to rotate back and forth. Let's bring the arms down here for a second. No waist articulation, but there's still ball joints at the tops of the thighs. There's swivel cuts three quarters of the way up the thigh. A single hinge again only on the lower leg. You can rotate, speaking of what's the lower leg. And again, you got pickles on the undersides of the feet. So yeah, still the same flash that we did get before. When it comes to Batman though, just by the luck of the draw and seeing as we've now had a look at him in a single card release we then had a look at him in the 89 batmobile where now this is the third chance to get our at least the third time third chance to see michael keaton as batman in a smaller four inch scale you know still is a nice looking figure i mean i don't know if it looks as much like michael keaton but for the fact that this is a four inch scale batman and the fact that spin master again continues to put as much articulation in these pieces like the look of the batman here and he still has again like the cloth cape so nothing's new to really report there 
The cloth cape will certainly, like the case before when we looked at the 89 Batmobile, allow at least the figure to sit inside the Batwing. Again, we're going to look not to spend too much time on the articulation, but again, it's all the same as the Batman we looked at before. I just again show you. This was the Batman came included with the 89 Batmobile. And I think the, oh, here's the other Batman here as well that came included with the single card release. The exact same Batman. It's a trio of Cape Crusaders. So there's nothing really to, to say or talk about in that case. The only thing, again, for the single card release was the fact that that Batman and the Flash we looked at before did come technically included with accessories. So if you did still want the accessories to come included with the figures, those are the only opportunity to get them. Uh, we're going to put Batman down just for a second because, again, we're going to bring him back in a moment. Just He's going to sit inside, of course, the cockpit. I think at one point in the, in the movie, the trailer we've seen at least so far, I think Barry Allen's actually piloting inside the, uh, the Batwing. Uh, in the case like this, obviously, you can have either one of the figures sitting inside. For me, at least, I would much rather have Batman in sitting inside the, the Batwing, but that may very well change. As for the Batwing itself, like the Batmobile, it's fairly light. I knew I was probably going to knock Flash over in the process. It's a fairly light vehicle. It's nicely detailed, certainly for what it is. And I like the sleek design of it. It looks a lot cooler than I feel, at least, than the original 89 Batwing. It looks a little bit more menacing. Now, it does have the means on underneath here. It actually does have three landing gears. Two, uh, well, obviously one on either side for the wing, and then one main one that's just below the, the cockpit. These just simply fold down, fold down the sides as well. And when you fold them down, they're very loud and snappy. This also allows this to then be flat. And in case you did want to then display it hanging in a room, hey, that's a good idea. You can also do that as well. One thing I did notice, though, about the Batwing when I first removed it from its cardboard box first of all it had a couple of straps you already saw at the beginning of the review there was a strap across both the sides of the wings there was one across the back or the front and then there was also one from the back so it's fairly easy to remove from its packaging but when i did remove it i was, was kind of perplexed to see this part right here first of all it's, it's a different type of plastic it's shinier obviously than the matte black that they use for the majority of the body and there's also a screw part right here a screw hole I wonder at one point if they had planned to make this with some audio or some light up effects, a battery compartment, if anything, stored inside here to do something to warrant why this plate had to be here. Because I don't think it would just be from an assembly standpoint. I don't think it would serve any purpose from at least building this. It doesn't help to aid Batman sitting inside the cockpit. So I wonder why that battery, or I, I assume it to be a battery compartment. I don't know why this plate would have been here in the first place. But I think... At one point, they had planned to put electronics inside the Batwing, and then maybe just decided not to do it, which is fine. So nice detailing on the undercarriage of the Batwing. you got those turbine uh, fans on either side. I would imagine at some point, this is probably going to be hovering in the movie. You've got some nice detailing also here for the vents on the front of the vehicle. On the front, it actually kind of looks like the little pincers that it would have had in the 89 movie when he's capturing all of Joker's balloons. Why didn't somebody tell me he had one of those things? And while there really isn't any paint, there's certainly a lot more paint that's been given to the 89 Batmobile. All in all, you know, again, it's a nice looking Batwing. One that I'm going to definitely be hanging inside my office, maybe hanging it from the top. There really isn't a section, not a hole necessarily, where you'd be able to hang this. It would have been nice if they could have actually put a, a hole on the back, but then if you're obviously not hanging it from a string, you'd only notice a very obnoxious hole there on the back of it. I probably could find another ways to attach it. Now, it does open up. Let's go ahead. Now, there is a little section here on the front of the canopy. You can get your finger in there. And then this just opens up. And like the case before when we looked at the, the Batmobile, there is only an option to seat one figure inside. There isn't necessarily sticker applications. There's no additional paint. But you've got yourself a nicely detailed, molded inside of the canopy. And then you can take your figure. In this case, I'm going to take Batman. I'm not going to take Barry Allen. But you can take your Batman and sit him inside. Now, when you are sitting him inside, you'll notice that the middle console... There's a little area here where you kind of have to straddle Batman's legs and get him around that. And from there, you can easily fit then the figure in. Just want to tuck his cape in around him as well. And then you can easily close up the canopy. Snap it in the front. And that's going to look nice. Maybe it actually is working to my favor that I did already get myself another Batman anyways. Because I could see myself really displaying this, I think, with Batman inside the canopy, inside the cockpit. And then just not having another Batman, another Batman on display on the shelf with the rest of the figures we got from Spin Master. Uh, so some of the other things, of course, I also wanted to point out to you guys as well. Some really nice panel, uh, nice little compartment things that they've molded. Nothing really works as a gimmick. Nothing really opens and closes. These little flaps, I would imagine, will open in the movie. Whether they actually store like weapons, for example, or they ser certainly serve as just flaps to help stabilize the vehicle while it's moving around. 
you know, again, while it doesn't have, again, any real paint to it, it's a really nice looking vehicle. And I'm glad to see that they did use, again, the option to have landing gears, not only on the front, but also the sides as well. These ones are a little harder to get to. But once you draw all three of them out, you then can either have this displayed on the shelf or, like I'm probably going to try to do, have this hanging down. Kind of like what we saw in the poster work for this Flash movie, of course, where the silhouette shadow of the Batwing can be seen in the top corner. And also what we saw in the movie as well, we, I think we see at one point a glimpse, a glimmer of the Batwing actually just sort of hanging inside the, the Batcave. I don't even know how Batman would actually find a way to get to the, the Batwing, but it's a nice looking design vehicle. And I guess one thing also we can do as well as we wrap things up here for the Batwing. Let's just move the Batwing over here once again. I'm sorry, Flash. I keep moving, moving Flash. Let's bring once, once again back in the 89 Batmobile. The only thing we still have yet to look at when it comes to the vehicle department of things is obviously the Ben Affleck release that's going to come also included with the Bat Cycle. That will be coming up in an upcoming review. But, you know, again, I really like the look of these. And while there really isn't a lot of stuff that they put into this, nor gimmicks, no, no anything that really functions, firing missiles... Nothing along those lines. And while I still think at one point they had planned to put a battery compartment in the Batwing, only just only as the only real argument that the battery there seems to be a plate on the bottom undercarriage of the Batwing. I think they're nice looking vehicles though. What do you guys think of the Batwing? Let me know down below in the comments section. Is this something you could see yourselves picking up for your collection? For those looking to get their hands on the brand new Flash movie Batwing, just know that the price point of which many of the online sites currently have this in stock for is $25.99. A very, I feel, enticing price point that Spin Master have set these vehicles for that any kid, any parent that's buying these for their kids or any parent that wants to buy them for themselves... I think it's a very affordable price to be getting not only the, the larger vehicle, but also then two figures that sit inside of it. Whether I feel they probably should have included exclusive figures would be a completely different conversation altogether. But I'm glad to at least see that Spin Master, while though they did include the same figures as we did get before, at least included figures. There's nothing worse than getting a vehicle, for example, and not getting a figure right away to go along with it. It usually is a case when many companies will release a vehicle, and then it's always an add-on to get a figure that has to go along with it. At least Spin Master was smart to include figures along with the vehicle, whether you decide to display Batman in the cockpit or Barry Allen instead. What do you guys think of the, the Batwing? Could you guys see yourselves picking this one up for yourself? And have you been collecting any of the Spin Master Flash figures and toys? Let me know down below in the comments section. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at Spin Master that did take the time and provide the sample of the brand new Flash, Ultimate Batwing, and a Flash, and a Batman. We could have a look at this review. Speaking of reviews, if you guys enjoyed the one you just finished watching, why not throw it a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to see more of the Scarlet Speedster, Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. And as of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.